before we start this video, a large thank you to Noah, Stuart, Matthew, Sadman, Rexy, Last One, Panya, Philip, David, Katron, and Andre for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Good day, everybody. I went ahead and swapped out our uh, summon here for a more, I feel like, friendly looking character. Got a little golden ghost here. So he does the same as before. Follows us around and stops when he gets within the stopping range. But in this video, we're going to give him the functionality to engage other enemy AI on the map and attack them and have them fight. So let's start by going to the companion stance, or sorry, the combat stance state script humanoid. Copy every bit of logic under the first two brackets and right up to the last two brackets. So basically everything within the class and the namespace. Then we want to go over to our companion uh, combat stance state. And then paste that in there. And I just made a mistake because I didn't erase the original tick method. So basically eradicate everything inside that script, just leaving the class and the namespace, and then put that bit of logic in there. Now, the only thing that's really going to be different right now at this stage of development is that we're going to check for a distance between us and our hosts. And if we're too far away, we're going to run back to them. If you wanted to, you could even make this derive from the AI combat stance humanoid script. Because uh, again, it only has the one bit of different logic, that would probably be a good practice. I'm just here to show you the concepts. I'm not too concerned really about the way in which I lay them out in the series. So if you want to do that, go ahead. We may make more changes to this in the future. We most likely will, but it will share a lot of the logic. So let's go to the state and let's just make a comment here saying if we are too far away from our host, we want to get back to them. And we've already done this on another script, the idle script. So we can just copy that and put that right there. Okay, so copy that and go over to the combat stance script again and paste that right there. Now I'm going to go over here now again on the idle and copy the companion state follow host variable. And I'm going to put that right at the top here. I'm going to get rid of the pursue target state humanoid. Don't need that right now. Don't need any humanoid state scripts. And I'm going to copy the pursue target state script, but it's the companion state variant. So basically replacing any humanoid scripts with the companion variant. Humanoid being our advanced AI that we did before and companion being now the friendly AI. And I think I got the name wrong there on this. Yeah, that's pursue target companion, pursue target, companion, pursue, it's companion state, pursue target. That's the one. Okay, cool. Awesome. And the attack state is, I should just grab that real quick. I think it's just companion attack state or attack target. Yeah, I could have did a better job of naming these. Okay, so let's, my rename them in the future, honestly. You know, I love doing that. Let's copy that, put that up here. Looks good. I'm just going to make this not public. It was public before because I was having a very weird bug back in the, um, the advanced AI. I don't know if you guys remember that. So we can make those private. They don't need to be public unless you want them for debugging purposes, but then you should use the utilized field. Uh, I'm going to rename enemy to AI character. There we go. That works fine. And I'm just going to copy AI character and just rename everything that says enemy to AI character. And I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Okay, cool. So that's good. Uh, let's go and do the same thing down here with all these functions. Rename them. And I'm just going to not make you watch that. There we go. Fast forward, all done. Let's go over to the companion uh, script here again. And you can see we have an error. This is we don't have a current attack on our attack state. So let's go to the attack state humanoid script. And what we're going to do is do the same thing. Copy all the logic within the two brackets and paste it in our companion attack state script. So advanced humanoid AI this is what you're going to want to go into. And then go to our attack state humanoid and everything within the class in the namespace. Copy it and paste it. Uh, the same logic will apply. We can reuse this, but we'll change perhaps a couple things in the future. But right now, this one actually is going to be identical. We're not going to do a distance check on the attack state because we don't want to interrupt the AI if they're in the middle of an attack. We'll just do the distance check on the combat stance state and the idle state. Okay, that looks good. We need to change, though, everything that says uh, humanoid to companion. So let's go and grab all of the variables here and just paste them right here. You can keep the name the same, just change the type and that won't give you any errors uh, because again, the logic is identical and all the variable names are the same. So this will work out just fine. I'm just going to copy this here now. Combat stand state, paste that over the humanoid version. There we go. And 
rotate target state humanoid. This would work again, uh, but I think this references a eat pan state. <laughs> that was when I was having a bug. I was trying to test something and delete that. I thought that was gone. <laughs> um, yeah, the rotate target state will need to be changed too because I believe it uh, calls for a combat stand state and we can't use the combat stand state humanoid because it again it is different. So we'll make another version of that as well. I'll double check that though just to make sure. Everything else in here is identical to my knowledge. Uh, we may need to change a couple things in the future, but right now this will work for demonstration and it will work to actually have the AI fight. Gonna take another sip of tea. Okay, so let's double click hero. I guess I forgot to save, got an error. Save, it should go away. Let's go to the states on our friendly phantom and let's go and put down, I'm just gonna put the rest of these companion states here. There's five of them, I believe. And after we have the rotate towards target, there will be six. All right, looks good. I'm putting the combat stance and then the pursuit target. And I'm missing one here. I think it's the attack target. All right, so I'm quickly going to add the rotate target state and just see. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, it references the combat stance, which is the humanoid combat stance. So let's open up the rotate target state and copy all the logic except for the last two brackets and the first two brackets. Again, same thing, paste it in there. That one's also identical. Uh, assuming that, of course, all of your friendly phantoms are humanoid in nature. Otherwise, you'll have to make a simple version of it, like we did with the other AI, where they just have attacks and rotations, but the attacks aren't item-based. Uh, otherwise, you might get some weird behavior or it won't work at all, unless you make items specifically for your non-humanoid characters. Okay, so remove the rotate towards target humanoid if you had it there and put down the companion state one. Let's open that up. Put down our namespace, delete the start and update functionality, the same as usual. And then let's paste in our rotate towards target logic. Just gonna go over here and grab that real quick. I thought I opened it, but I guess I did not. Let's see. And there we go. All right, let's copy everything within the brackets here. Leave the last two, namespace and class and then paste it within here. So the only thing we need to change is the combat stand state, and we just need to change the variable type, don't need to change the name. So let's just grab this variable type and paste it over the old variable type right here. And that should work. There we go. Uh, why does this give me an error? Right, I'm not deriving from state. <laughs> That's why. Okay, there we go, no more error. Gonna rename enemy to AI character, and we should be good with this now. So let's run a few tests in a bit. I'm like probably gonna tweak a few settings on the AI too. We're just gonna see. I'm gonna make this not public. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna make an awake method here now and call that an awake. I'm also gonna check all my companion scripts and make sure I'm calling all the variables on awake. Make sure you do that because you won't get thrown an error in some cases. So you won't know what's going on, it just won't work. So go to your all your companion state scripts and verify. Yep, let's call it an awake. Uh, this one is not called on awake. So let's call follow host state on awake here. And this is in the companion state combat stance. And then the last one, pursue target, I don't even think we have written yet. So let's go and check that out in a sec. I'm gonna save that. And over here, I'm gonna change all of this from public to private. And then I'm going to uh, change rotate towards target state to companion instead of humanoid, and this is on the companion state attack target, so this is the attack state of the companion. And then down in awake, make sure all that's called. Yes, this is gonna be an error because I changed the variable type, so I will paste this variable type in here right now. Good to go. Cool, save that. Um, did we do the pursue target? I don't think we did. I feel like I'm missing one thing here. Nope, here we go. Yeah, it's not done. So the pursue target, again, will be identical except for the distance check. So we can copy the pursue target state logic from the pursue target humanoid section. It's good that we can reuse a lot of this stuff. Uh, but we're going to make a check at the very top of the state, the beginning of the state. And we're going to say that if we are uh, X distance away, then return the follow companion state script, which will make the AI ignore every action until it gets within X distance of its follower again. So they'll just kind of drop what they're doing. So I'm just gonna change the variable type up here to companion combat stance instead of humanoid. I'm gonna add in the return and follow to our host. Uh, actually, do we need that here? Mm, I feel like we should because it's good practice. So yeah, we'll put it in here because if they chase them to the end of the earth and they just keep running away for a reason, they'll follow them forever. So we'll do that. 
let's go to the companion state follow host copy the variable type put it up here name it follow host put that on awake or follow host state rather and then just make the check right at the top of the tick just like you would on any other uh, entry version of the state so just this is the first thing we check for all the time and it will be prioritized all right so back here paste that right there and let's save that now we still have to do a couple more things there's a couple things I want to tweak as well whoops that's renamed enemy rename that to ai character I'm gonna rename this whole script again so be right back um while i do that actually i'll just talk we're going to check out some of the interactions between the ai because i think there's a they rotate in the combat stance state to a degree that i don't like and i know why i'm just going to double check it when we get these guys fighting so let's add some enemy attacks don't forget to add your attacks don't forget to give your ai stamina or else they won't be able to perform the attack unless you've overwritten that when i said it a few episodes ago because uh, these actions check for stamina whether you're ai or not you can overwrite that as an ai by casting it as ai character and ignoring the stamina check but Make sure the AI character has stamina or you'll be wondering why they're just walking around in circles and never swinging. All right, I'm going to enable this guy to dodge. And I'm just going to tweak the percentage so it's not so high. And I'm going to check over his settings, make sure there's nothing that I missed when I was setting him up. I'm going to allow him to form combos, set that at 100%, so he performs a combo every single time. He's a very aggressive man. So if we go in here now, you can see this guy, he swings and hits the enemy, there it is. But you can see that the enemy still follows me blindly. That is because uh, we're not ever switching a target and this is just, this isn't really fun design. So the easiest way to do this, we can do it in the more elegant manner in the future, but the easiest way to do it is on trigger enter on your damage glider. What you wanna do is make a cast and casts are very cheap, almost non-existently cheap. So don't worry about using them. Um, what you can do right here is check for a AI character manager. So we can say AI character manager. We can call this AI character and we can say equals character manager or enemy manager as AI character manager. And what that does is it checks to see if this enemy manager is actually an AI character manager. And then what we can do is we can see if that's null and if it's not, we can run some logic, but first we can actually make this a lot cleaner. Let's copy everything inside the character stats manager and delete it and then delete this check for the character stats manager and paste that right below here why are we doing this because now we call everything from the enemy manager and if the enemy manager if the enemy manager is not null then the character stats manager should never be null so down here let's say ai character dot current target equals character manager as in the character manager operating the damage glider on this weapon that's this variable up here you can rename that if you want to character dealing damage or character wielding weapon whatever you want i'm going to keep it as character manager and let's make a comment here saying if the AI is, well, I'm actually going to delete that because that's in the way of another comment. I'll put this below the deal damage and then I'll make the comment right here. We'll say if the target is AI and the AI is damaged, something like that, the AI receives a new target, the person dealing the damage. And again, since this won't be an AI character every single time, we need to also uh, apply a check. So we're going to say if AI character does not equal null, run this logic. Otherwise, don't because you're not an AI character and that will just give you an error. So let's save that now. Let's go back into the game, run it here. You're going to dodge this guy. I've given my guy a nice little shield and I've added some blood effects again. For some reason, they came off the, the project. Now they're back. There we go. And you can see now he switches the target to this ghost here. But look at that. That rotation issue I'm talking about. They're not really facing each other. So we're going to fix that right now. I know why too. The Namesh agent is the one doing the rotation, but we should be rotating manually towards our target. So under the combat stance state, just use the manual rotation and delete the nav mesh rotation. Paste that on every combat stance script that you have. Uh, this will basically make the target face their target directly and not face the rotation of the nav mesh, which updates slower over time. This will just make you face the target that you have. Now we go in here again and they're going to engage in combat. This guy's gonna swing at them, boom, there we go. Awesome, now they're facing each other, cool. We could adjust the stopping distance, they are gonna be close, <laughs> he dodges them. This is pretty cool, I love watching AI fight. There we go, and he's dead. <laughs> I think our friendly phantom is a bit too broken. I just wanna see the effect I made for him. It's like a yellow puff of blood, ghost blood. Ah, there we go, cool, <laughs> so it's working. All right guys, so there you go. There is the bare bones to our uh, friendly AI, and we're going to polish both the AI and the friendly AI more. Uh, a lot of this is tweaking numbers too, and I want to stress that a lot. When you walk away from these tutorials, 
really give your own twist to it and really give a lot of love to it because at the end of the day I'm just showing you guys concepts and like a lot of this stuff comes down to the animations you use and the values you assign for example the stopping distance you don't want to be letting AI get too close and then there's the aggro distance you don't want to be letting me get too far away but we're going to do a bunch of more quality of life things too like checking for if the AI hits uh, a structure in the environment when they're in the combat stance state and then changing their walking direction but right now it's shaping up to be really fun and the AI section of any game is really honestly some of the most fun. So if you guys made this far, drop a like, leave a comment. This genuinely helped with the series so much. A large thank you to my patrons because of you guys. I get to keep doing this and I love doing this. I will see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>